Hi folks, I'm Andrew, and today I would like to teach you how to graph the following polynomial function of x minus 1 cubed multiplied by x plus 3 squared. So it turns out that in order to kind of sketch the graph of this function, all right, we can, uh, well, what we could do is kind of plug it into the calculator and just copy it. I mean, we could do that. But uh, if you're not allowed to do that, uh, we have to have a algebraic method, all right, that we can kind of follow, all right, and it might require a little bit of memorization about a couple of facts. So first thing is uh, to kind of graph this thing, I want to get an idea of what's called what the end behavior is like, all right, what the end behavior is like. And the end behavior of, of the function will be equal, all right, or not equal, but it will be um, uh, correlated with the highest power of the variable. Now, you don't have that here. You have factored, you have this function in factored form. If you had something like x to the fifth, you know, minus x to the fourth, my, you know, plus blah, 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 then the behavior would be, you know, uh, the behavior would be uh, indicated by the fifth power here, the highest power of the variable, okay? As well as, by the way, as well as the coefficient. So you have to kind of take those both into account. You got to take the power itself and whatever the coefficient is, whether it's positive or negative, and not necessarily what the number is, uh, but meaning if it's 2x or 4x or whatever the case is. Um, but so that's one way to do it. Now we don't have that in we don't have that here in this function. We have this already in factored form. So the other way I can kind of indicate that to you or tell that to you is that the end behavior is going to be equal to or, or correlated with, right? The total the total multiplicity of the function. And the total multiplicity is just found by taking the multiplicity of each factor. Now you're like, multiplicity, what in the world? Can you just speak English? Well, sure. It's just the power, okay? The multiplicity of each factor is equal to the power of that factor, all right? And the total then multiplicity will be equal to the summation of all of those powers, all right? So the total multiplicity of this thing is just equal to 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Now what you have to know here is you have to know whether this value here is odd or even because this will start to indicate the end behavior, okay? That's one fact, whether it's odd or even. Then you have to also know whether the overall leading coefficient, as I was mentioning before, is positive uh, or negative. In this case, when we have it in fully factored form, if there's nothing out here with a negative sign, then we are to assume that it is positive indeed, okay? So what we have is we have an odd multiplicity total multiplicity, and we also have it being uh, positive. Now, what you can do is you can kind of memorize this, all right? So what we'll do is let's flip to now um, this particular screen, and this screen will now tell us the end behaviors of the following functions, whether you have an even degree, overall degree, or odd degree or odd total multiplicity, however you want to think about it. But what we have is we have an odd total multiplicity, and we have a positive leading coefficient, basically. All right, so this is going to be the end behavior of the function. In other words, this is going to trail on and on and on off forever in that direction. This is going to trail on and on and on in that direction. And the interesting part is what's going to happen here in the middle, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go back to here, and we're just going to try to create a set of axes. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, kind of put a little point down here, remind myself that it's going to trail on and on and off that way. I'm going to put a little point over here, trail on and on and off that way. Okay, why do these end behaviors arise from, you know, having odd total multiplicities and, or, and positive or negative coefficients? Well, I have a video on that, okay? I'll try to leave a link in the description below, but you can always search the channel and it should be kind of in this playlist, all right? Um, now, the next step then after you figure out the end behavior is to identify the x-intercepts. Now I have tons of videos on that as well, so if you want to understand why we're doing what we're doing, I highly recommend you view those, okay? Uh, but right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the process, and the process is to take each of these factors, all right, and set that equal to zero. So you're going to set that equal to zero, and you're going to set this one equal to zero, and what you're going to do is you're going to solve these for x, right? So you have to add 1 to both sides. So then x is going to be equal to a positive 1. Great. And then you're going to do the same thing over here. You're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And x is going to be equal to negative 3. 
Now, the reason why we do that is because we're trying to find out, remember, the x-intercepts are the locations on the, of the function where the y value is equal to zero. Now, the y value is always going to be equal to zero somewhere along the x-axis, okay? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the x values that will produce an overall value of this function of zero. And if you think about it, if I were to take positive one and I plug it in here, this whole term is going to zero, and I could care less whatever this thing is because zero times whatever the heck this thing is is zero. Okay, that's a little bit of the y. In any case, why that is. So what I'm gonna now gonna do is now that I found my x-intercepts, I'm going to now go to the graph and I'm gonna go to positive one and I'm gonna put a little point there, okay? And then I'm gonna go to negative three, negative one, negative two, negative three, somewhere over there, okay? That's negative three. And I'm gonna plot a little point. So what I know is that this function here has to somehow come up to that point, okay? And also on this side, this has to somehow come down to that point, all right? Now, what I need to figure out is whether does it cross that point now or does it bump, right? Does it come back down? Same thing here. Does it cross that point or does it do a little bump ski, all right? Does, a little, do, does it do a little bumperoo, all right? Now, um, in order to determine that, what we need to do is we need to look at the multiplicity of each factor individually, Okay. So the multiplicity of this factor is three, and that's odd, okay? The multiplicity of this factor is a two, and that's even. Now recall that we found this x-intercept from this factor, okay? So the behavior of the graph at this x-intercept is correlated with the nature, whether it's odd or even, meaning the power, okay? Whether the power is odd or even of that particular factor. So when you have odd factor, odd multiplicities, basically, all right, for, for an individual factor here, uh, what that means is that it is going to cross. Now, why does it cross? Guess what? I have a video on that, all right? Um, and the evens will bump. So if you're curious, check those out. It's not necessary, but I, I highly suggest it. I don't want you to just memorize stuff. I want you to understand why, because I don't know, then when the questions change, you're not lost, all right? So... The, uh, for the odds, it's going to cross the x-axis. So what's going to happen is it's going to cross here um, at x being equal to positive 1. Because remember, that's the factor that gave rise to that, um, that uh, x-intercept. Okay, So it's going to cross. And then what we find here at the uh, x minus 3, it was even, so it's going to do, do a little bump. right? So meaning it's going to come up to it and bump down. Now if you notice here, there's only one way now that these two points can possibly connect to one another. They're not going to connect now via a straight line, but a nice smooth curve, right? So it kind of comes down and it's going to come back around somewhere. Now, whether this turn happens to the left of that y axis or whether it happens to the right, that totally depends on other factors now. And that's not really the point of this particular problem. We just want to sketch the graph, okay? A general idea. But what we do realize also, now there's only one more kind of piece we would probably need to create a nice accurate picture. And the last piece that we would need is something called the y-intercept, okay? Now, you already know, based on what we're doing, is that the y-intercept, there's no way that this y-intercept can be positive. There's just no way, right? Given that it has to cross here, it bumps here, um, and then I have to connect those two points. And I can't cross the x-axis again, right? It's not like I can kind of come down with this thing and then go, oh, back up and cross that something, because now I have another x-intercept. That's just not going to work. So we already know kind of what we're looking for, so we want to just confirm it. Let's make sure we're doing this right. So you want to find the y-intercept now. And how you do that is you take the function you're given, okay? x minus 1 cubed times x plus 3 squared. First of all, you can get rid of the h of x. You can just call it y. It's the same, same thing. And all you're going to do now is you're going to plug in 0 for x because what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the y value, all right? When x is 0, that by definition is what a y-intercept is. So all you got to do, throw in zero for every x you see. Now when you do that, all you have to do is then the following math. This works out to be negative one, but negative one cubed remains a negative one, right? Positive three, overall, you're going to square that, so that's a positive nine. So you're going to have a positive nine multiplied by a negative one, so that should be a negative nine, and oh my goodness, it's going to be negative. And that's what we said it should be.
right? So this should be some negative nine value. And now we kind of have enough information we need in order to sketch this graph, okay? So what I'm gonna do is kind of make this look just a little bit nicer. I'm gonna keep the same general shape though. All right, so I will be back in literally, I don't know, half a second. Bam. So that's what it should look like. Now you can always double check yourself, go to your calculator, all right, and just simply plug in the function. Go to the original function and plug it in. Just do x minus one, close the parentheses and cube it, and then go to open parentheses, do x plus three, and then square that, okay? Then go to zoom, hit standard number six, and there's the basic function, right? So that's the idea, okay? We probably could have been a little more specific here about the what happens to the behavior at one, since you do have an even, so let me just kind of expand on that a little bit, just because I want to give you a little more detail. Um, when you have something that is even, it will definitely cross that point. As you can see, it crosses it here. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. Go to zoom two. Okay. So as you can see, it definitely crosses the x-axis, but it doesn't look nice and straight, right? So the reason why that is, is because even though you have an even, uh, excuse me, even though you have an odd multiplicity and it will cross, once you start getting values that are now greater than one, like three and five and seven and nine, the graph is gonna continually flatten out. So this would be like an example of three, the third power. This would be then like an example of the fifth power. You know, the seventh power would then be even flatter, et cetera. I know I'm not being very detailed there, but that's the idea. So you can give a little bit more detail about what's going on here. All right, and yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, make that a little bit of an adjustment. Great, and there you have it. All right, so guys, thanks again for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helps, and if it does, if you can like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. It allows us to produce more content, and uh, yeah, we really appreciate all your support, all right? We wouldn't be here without you, so thank you, thank you, thank you, and I will see you soon. Take care.